Hello, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and today I'm going to be reviewing The Boy Who Cried Magic by Andy Gladwin. Before I do that, can you please like and subscribe, check the bell icon, it really does make a huge difference. And this is sponsored by cardmagiccourse.com. That's my own online card magic course that I still add to every week when I upload the live sessions that we have. It's a brilliant way, by the way, of learning, um, even if you're established, you know, to come into the live sessions. But if you can't, you can watch them afterwards and to listen to discussions about magic and different you know, different issues and challenges people having with certain moves. I do teach. I have like three different cameras teaching on the live sessions as well. So they're uploaded every week and they happen every week, nearly every week. And uh, then, of course, you've got the stuff that I add to the course uh, as well as that. So cardmagiccourse.com, have a look at it. It's me teaching you to be good at card magic. <laughs> That's what it is with over 200 videos and all that. God, I do go on about it, don't I? But, you know, go up and so... Uh, this is a book. Now, I've done the interview with Andy, so there's quite a lot of information on there. So I'm not going to go. I, I just already recorded a review of this and went through every trick and it went on for about half an hour. And I just thought, you know what? It kind of ruins it. Y you don't want to tell people about every trick, but I'm going to go through what I like about it. First of all, there's this thing, isn't there, where this was a book that was hyped. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it had this amazing trailer, this one-shot trailer that Vanish and Ink did, which was their most expensive trailer ever. And you can see how good it looked. God knows how many takes it took, but it looked amazing. Uh, and it had a trick in it, and one of the most difficult tricks in the book, uh, you know, in the middle of it as well. Uh, so you, you've, you've got that. You've got the fact that Andy is Vanish and Ink, and it's his first book of his own published material, his own material that he's published. And again, there's pressure, no doubt, on him for this to be good, but there's expectation for everybody. Um, there's the fact that he, you know, he, he writes about studying magic and focusing on magic is astonishing essays work. So, he, you know, he has demonstrated his knowledge and said that this is, you know, this is the book after, with all that knowledge, I've distilled it down to these 16 routines and 15 techniques, I think. Uh, and this is what I think is, is, is it's straight from my repertoire and what I think is the best of what I do. So... Should be good, eh? And is it? Well, I think if you've seen the interview, you'll kind of know that I like it. But why do I like it? So, I like, well, f first of all, the introduction really got me straight away because it was written, the stuff he said was the stuff I agree with. And I know that's quite egotistical. It's like, I like it because I agree with it. But it's something that I've experienced. And, and I think that non-performers sometimes, when they write magic books, and don't get me wrong, I love them. I love books that really geek out and the people may have never done it on stage or done it in walkabout, but you kind of, I love the thinking and I know that people have written up routines about performing them and I still enjoy learning them and that's a different thing. But this is what claims to be in the beginning um, stuff that from his repertoire that you can work with. And I'm thinking, you know, I know with Andy's knowledge, there's a danger of, you know, how do you, how do you whittle that much down? And again, we talked about it in the interview, but how, how do you not include stuff that you just love? And, and, and he has full credit. He has taken routines and really streamlined them, which I wasn't expecting so much. I wasn't expecting how commercial they were going to be. And, but then when I read more of the introduction, he, he, he's got this bit about making magic bulletproof, which is almost the first principles of magic, which again, we've talked about the, where you, you, you boil it down to what makes a magic trick actually work. You know, how can we empathize with that member of the audience and see what they see and, and, and make sure it doesn't go on too long and it doesn't get too self-indulgent. And he really, I mean, the, the, after the introduction, he's got the close-up, professional close-up magic bit. And he does say this is for the sort of professional close-up magician okay so and and the first bit is you know close-up magic i think it's called i've read this book twice and and um close-up card magic <laughs> i thought it was but then i was just like i, I kind of overthought it and thought no it's not it's something else yeah close-up card magic because that's what it is um i suppose it's all a bit well no it isn't all close-up card magic so oh i had to dig deep for that one um, so it's, I think my favourite out of these, I'm so, so tempted to go through them all, because they're all really, I couldn't, it was really hard for me to find a favourite for the close-up ones, but I think I love Perfect Order, Perfect, it's got great, if you know Whack Your Pack by, uh, by um, Paul Harris, he's got a version of that which is really, really nice as well. Um, Perfect Order is, uh, is a triumph routine 
they choose a card uh, and then you tell them what their card is and they've chosen one of the face down cards when they've triumphed, when they're, they're genuinely shuffled in as well. So if you know triumph face up, face down, you do a shuffle that makes it look like they're going face up, face down, they actually are this time. Um, and you tell them what the card is and then you spread the deck and say all the rest of the hearts are face up. Now with triumph, it's, and he, and he does sort of mention this, you think it doesn't need anything else and it kind of feels like a different trick as well but it's just a fairness well a lot of triumph actually need the table this doesn't um it, i mean it kind of helps with it i think but you can do it without a table but it's got a really it's a really nice routine and i know this because i performed it when i couldn't perform it very well uh, and it went down really really well the bits in it that seem very difficult are well covered by scripting and you know the bits where you're looking through and doing a certain thing you can kind of almost take your time with it and watch him do it he, he's got a video somewhere google it of him doing it um so i really like that there's whack your phone which is the whack your pack thing which uses a kind of the, the phone in a really nice way and it's like a challenge trick uh, but I, I again perform that pretty much straight away it's got a, got a consecutive um doubles which are going to be quite difficult for some people but we'll talk about the kind of difficulty level in a minute and um, so i keep looking down because i'm looking at th these tricks um ghost is the one he did on the trailer have a look at it it is it is actually that trick it, it's a, it's an amazing trick it's a sandwich trick um with a sort of vanishing of two cards which is challenging it's got like this double cull thing we talk about that in the interview as well I keep saying we talk about stuff in the interview it's because i want you to go and watch it because it's it's really good um pocket mule is his version of um the smiling mule which doesn't feel like the smiling mule but it's kind of the same trick but the reason i like this is because i always have an issue with a smiling mule which is beautiful that there's a gag and a trick that happen at exactly the same time not the main trick but the, there's a gag and sort of a magical thing that I always had trouble with separating. He's done that in this trick and given it a very different feel but kept that essence of the trick. Um, Fireworks is a, um, a multiple selection with three cards that end up between uh, four aces but then you've got this really really nice and not very difficult vanishing of the four aces as they go into the deck to find the cards and then you do the collector's thing where they found the three cards and then you separate the two, there's a magical moment where they think they're holding all of them and the selections have disappeared again from the aces or the kings or whatever you want to use. Um, and then they, you turn the cards in their hand into the selections again one at a time. It's an interesting trick because I'm reading it and actually I found this with loads of this stuff. It reads quite long but when you do it it's really quick. This is a bit long and it felt like is it going to be piling on too much to the effect but it really isn't and when I showed it to someone it didn't once feel like oh another effect another effect it really did work it's got a real sort of circular um, feeling to it and I love that I think for my favorite out of all those is probably the fireworks trick and well worth learning and well doable as well then we've got card technique okay loads of stuff on the master push-off if you know Andy's master push-off he's he's lectured this for years it's his way of doing of dealing uh, pushing off two cards it's really hard it's a really good challenge. I'm loving learning it. I enjoyed learning it in written word more than I did on video. It got me more into it for some reason. And then he's in, in the next chapter at the card table, he's got loads of ways of using it. So it's really motivating. So I'm, I would almost have a look at that in the card, at the card table chapter and go back to the master push off because that will give you the motivation to learn it. There's some, there's some great routines in, in that, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then he's got loads of techniques. Uh, shuffles and cuts i'm not going to go into them all but they're really good there's a way of uh cutting like four packs onto the table that look like you're you're cutting them but you're actually uncutting them that's why it's called the undo cut but you know what i mean it, it, it's, it's super fair you just do it and it looks like they're completely mixed up um he's got a shuffle that that gets to the same thing as well um a cut the cut he's got some really nice techniques on the cull which actually make that, that bit work from when you cull cards, you know, multiple cards to going into when they're on top, just a really nice, fair, even more fair way of doing it. And I'm a big um, cull fan. And then he's got these finesses. Um, the two favourites of those for me were, the there's a tilt finesse, which is really good in it, a subtlety that makes a tilt look amazing. And I'm not going into it, but it just looks like you can show them that it's gone halfway. And some of the... Uh, tilt finesses don't quite make sense do they uh, even though I use them all I think they're great but this one really really is good and I've never come across it before and the the, the <laughs> brilliant really um, bold thing is you know the browy thing where you you do an ambitious card and you say well, I'm going to bend the card and put it into the deck you do that but then put the deck on the table or in their hands and then they 
a couple of seconds later it pops up. So the card pops up in the hand. It almost gives it a haunted deck feel, which is, which I think is really nice. I've played with it and it actually does work. If, I think you've got to play with it quite a lot um, to get it really solid, but really, really, really nice. Um, oh, and the fan change as well. It's a beautiful color change, which is very knacky, using a half fan, a little bit like that window change um, that I remember learning, but even more knacky, but, but very, very cool and a very clean finish. Okay, at the card table, I'm not gonna, I can't go into the re every trick, I pretty much have, but at the card table, my favorite, I'm gonna take three of my favorites. There are five routines here. From the center is a center dealing routine where you talk about how difficult the center deal is. We've seen these routines before and then you're actually not doing one, but you're making it look like you're doing doing center deals but with this one you're doing something that actually isn't that <laughs> I mean it's it's easier than the set center deal but it's still challenging but you can call the cards before you deal them so you look at the cards and go right now I'm gonna know I'm gonna tell you exactly what cards I'm gonna deal so you're, you're telling them what cards you're gonna deal before dealing them out in the center which is great and then you spread the deck and there's four face up aces there spread in the deck and you go right I'm gonna I'm gonna center deal those one at a time now um, and which is it just looks so good and I've played with it and I can't do it yet properly, but I'm kind of getting there. And I think that's one I'd love to take out because like all of these you know, at the table stuff, they're gambling routines, but they're not, people don't have to know the card games to be able to do them. So, so I like that about them. I don't like, you know, cause most people don't know the, the rules of poker. There might be a couple of them, but it's, it's too, I want, you know, we're going to do a gambling demonstration with a four aces or a four kings or something like that. Um, red, black to the future is a call to the colors routine. If you don't know what a call to the colors routine, just Google it. But it's a Marlowe idea, I think, originally, but with the cards all done face up. So it gives it a really magical feel. It's almost like if, you, if you've ever seen Leonard Green do the, and it's not this, but the snap deal when they're face up and you see this, these kind of reds and blacks go down, it's reminding me of that. It's all very, very fair looking. Um, so again, for me, added a little bit of, of magic to it. Um, and the Castle Jacks routine was, it's, brilliant it's a three stage it's a whole act really it can be and he says you can split it into three bits but it's got this classical assembly in it which is like an ace assembly but all happens stand up and it all happens in the glass so the the aces or the kings or whatever you want to use go back to the glass rather than in this t formation so it kind of works on stage this and it's got kind of a memory man routine based on a joel gibbons idea which i think is pretty much the same as the joel gibbons he does credit very well in this and it ends up with a travelers which is very bold um, but but incredibly powerful and use it use the gray technique which is which is just again it's stream it feels like a lot's in there but it's streamlined the whole thing and that's the kind of theme of this book to me um the stand-up card magic is the is the last chapter um i think my favorite of this which i'll go with him there's a, there's a version of shuffleboard where he does his presentation of simon aronson shuffleboard which he doesn't go into how to do actual shuffleboard um, but you can find that in, uh, I think it's in Bouncer, please, but it might not be, but one of the Aronsons, but don't quote me on that. Cause I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. Um, but you just Google it, you'll be able to find out. But he does it with an iPad, and that's pretty much a self-working trick. The stand-up card magic stuff is will give you a respite from the other stuff. This is easy stuff that is more about presentation than method. So he's he's got this silent movie presentation where he gets someone up, and there's a whole silent routine where they're just following instructions from, from a board. You're showing them the instructions on the board, which is similar to shuffleboard, really, but a very, very different way of doing it. Um, and I liked this uh, supersonic, which is a really nice three-person, well, you and two other people routine. So it creates a really nice thing. You get two people on the stage and they do the trick to each other. They both pick a card out of each other's packs and they both find it. And then you, you're doing the same with a spectator from the audience that's still in their place. And it gives this, it's, I like tricks that, they might be card tricks, but they're working wide and long. So if you're on stage, you're, you're creating that whole space. And again, he has worked on stage a fair bit. He's done stuff for stand-up. He's done my own show um, in Sheffield. So he knows he's got, and he, he does his stuff at the session. So he knows the feel of how to fill a space. And, and, and I really felt that that out of those stand-up card magic ones, I think Supersonic and Thought Experiment uh, are the ones that I would take out there. Thought Experiment... Is, he said one of his favourite things out of the book, he, he didn't say it was his favourite book, and I said, you know, if there's one out there that stands out, and I think it was because it's so old, you know, it's Edward G. Brown, uh, he hasn't really changed it much, he's just taken it from glasses to, to being just in decks, but it's a thought of card, card across, and it's beautiful, you know, you get someone and you say, you know, here are the cards, have a look at these group cards, think of one, 
and actually, if, if anybody else is around, you can think of one too if you want. And, you've got and then um, the cards, the thought of cards has moved across to a di different deck. So again, it plays very wide, and it played very wide when he did it at the session. Um, but you've got this added thing of, did you think of one, a different one, and that's already also moved across. And I, I love that, and it sort of, it sums up that what the book does to me, is it's taking classic ideas. This book is unashamedly based on classics, and we talked about... The, the idea of standing on the shoulders of giants but not being scared to go, actually, that bit doesn't work for me. We can streamline that. I'm going to make this quicker. You know, and he, and he does that with all of these things. And you're left with, you know, this book is his distillation of all that he knows, but you've, you're left with tricks that have then been distilled from their originals as well. We're, we're still um, a real... In, in service of those original tricks. You know, these tricks aren't changed beyond recognition. They're these classic ideas, and it's a real education, this book, as well. You can, you know, when you read the, the because he knows his stuff, the crediting's amazing. You know, everything is in there. This is where this came from, and there was no idea. I'm not sure with this, but this was claimed by this person. And I felt that reading those bits was really enriching for me. I like to know where these tricks come from so I can go back and explore myself. And it and it, it did that, and it did it with, with and it honoured those those early creators as well in a way that that I thought was that was really commercial this is a really good card magic book it lives up to the hype um it lives up to I don't think anybody's going to get it and go well that's a bit disappointing and it's readable it's not that you know it's not this kind of huge tones which you kind of go oh you know great to have but I've been through this twice and I'm still studying it and it feels like it's a doable thing. It is slighty. It's a difficult... It's not knuckle-breaking. There's some stuff you'll be able to do quite quickly, but it is slight of hand card magic. Other than the stand-up stuff, and one of the um, on-the-table routines, which is cut, stop and shuffle or something like that, which is fairly self-working, but most of this stuff is gonna, you're going to want to sit at your, your close-up mat, put some music on, and get to work. And that's my favourite thing to do, and this is a perfect book for me because of that. So... Um, the Boy Who Cried Magic is available. All this stuff will be in the information down below. Do have a look at that. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, check out cardmagicourse.com. Do watch the interview with Andy. It's a corker. Really, really gave, gave an insight to how he thinks, not just about this is about my book. It was about magic and about our approach to magic and inspired a lot of people that have, have emailed me and told me. Uh, so again, really, really liked it. think you should get it. I'm not affiliated. Again, I don't get anything. But it's good to spread the word of good card magic. And let me know how you're getting on with it. Uh, take care. Like, subscribe. Press the bell icon. Go to see Card Magic Course. Go and have a look at it. Just go and look. Just go and tell everybody you have a look at it. Even if you're not going to sign up. Because I'll get up Google. And I'll do all right one day. Uh, take care. Merry Christmas if this goes out before then. If it doesn't, I hope you had a good one. <laughs> and if you're watching it next year in March, Christmas is all right, won't it? Lockdown and that, but there you go. Take care. Bye.